welcome to part six of Branch Line, this beginner's model railway journey. And I'm going to start with a personal question for you. What's your worst fear? Mice, spiders, heights, flying, the only breakfast option being smashed avocado on toast? Well, whatever it might be, Mine is wiring, and that's what I'm looking at in this episode, how I tried to overcome it, and went on a learning curve about adding dropper wires to the baseboard, to the layout, ready for a bus wire, which is an even bigger fear of mine. I'm not sure how this fear came about. Um, I didn't really have a lot to do with electrics uh, when I was at school or growing up really. Um, could just barely wire a plug. So it's not something that my career has taken me down, not a path that I've followed really. So it's, it's a new thing for me and um, it's quite new to think that it's part of model railway layouts, you know, a big part for some people. So what I decided to do after a lot of advice and thought about it was to look at the Pico Electrics um, feeder wires, I think they're called power feed joiners for code 100 and code 124 rail. So this is what I looked at and this is the packet. It's got some nice explanations on the back and it's basically a pair of red and black wires. I'm not quite sure what gauge they are but the wires that are tinned at one end, at the exposed end, and they are soldered to fish plates. So what happens is that you attach the track, two pieces of track, with the fish plates, with the wires, the red wire on one side of the track and the black wires on the other, and they drop down through holes that you've drilled, in the baseboard, another learning curve for me, sort of, then attach the bus wire underneath. Fairly straightforward for a lot of people. I used um, a trusty tool, what's become very trusty, which is my 8 inch, 20 centimeter, quite flexible steel rule. And because I'd nailed down a lot of the track already, I had to use this to, or did use this, to take up quite a lot of track. I actually started with sidings um, at the front end of the baseboard where I'm controlling it from. And then there are one or two other areas on the track where I'm going further towards the far end of the baseboard, the opposite side, where I've put droppers. Now, I'm not entirely sure whether that will be enough. I'll know when I try to run it um, having installed the bus wire. Some people don't like using the Pico pre-soldered wires. They prefer to solder the dropper wire themselves straight onto the track. This may make it more stable. There is a suggestion that there might be connectivity lost at some point in the future with the use of the pre-soldered fish plates. That's a risk I'm going to take because for me it was the only way to get on to this learning curve if you like. I tried soldering and even bought a soldering iron and didn't get very far with it. The next step will be to install the bus wire and that's something I'm going to do in the next episode. I'll be interested in your thoughts uh, as to whether this works or not and please leave a comment below. One thing I did find is that when I was attaching the fish plate 
they're quite sharp and hard and don't go in that easily. So I actually use the track rubber to push them in. Maybe a pair of gloves might have worked as well. But that's something I noticed. But eventually they all went in. On the drill, I used a three millimeter wood drill bit. And actually it was a lot more straightforward than I'd imagined. The test will be, of course, when the, when the bus wires are installed. So that's it, that's my learning curve for this week. Because I had a background in mental health and psychology, it's worth saying that sometimes your worst fears are not as bad as you think they are. And maybe to tackle them in steps, which is what I did. I've, I've actually done the dropper wires first, and now I'm waiting to get the wire for, for the bus wiring. So I'm doing it kind of in two halves really. And if it doesn't work, the dropper wires are in and I'll get somebody else to look at the bus wiring, but I've got a feeling it might. So I hope that was helpful and I'll see you in part seven.